In this tutorial we will discuss amperometric titration. Let's start with definition. A titration in which the end point is determined by the current at a suitable applied potential across two electrodes as a function of the volume of the titrating solution is called as amperometric titration. Basic principle of amperometric titration. The limiting current is independent of applied voltage immersed upon a dropping mercury electrode DME. If the residual and migration currents are eliminated, the voltage of limiting current almost depends upon the diffusion current. Here, diffusion current is proportional to the concentration of electroactive species in the solution. If some of the electroactive species is removed by interaction with reagent, the diffusion current will decrease. This is the fundamental principle of amperometric titration. The observed diffusion current as a suitable applied voltage is measured as a function of the volume of the titrating solution. The end point is the point of intersection of two lines giving the change of current before and after the equivalence point. The voltage applied at the beginning of the titration must be such that total diffusion current of the substance to be titrated or of the reagent or of both is obtained that is at least one of the reactants or products should give a polarographic limiting current. This is the essential requirement for the amperometry. For example, titration between lead ion Pb plus 2 and sulfate ion SO4 minus 2. A plot of simple illustration of amperometric titration is shown here. The titration of lead 2 salt with sulfate ion is the example of this type. In this case, limiting current is due to lead ion and is maximum at beginning. As the titrant sulfate ion SO4 minus 2 is added, PPT of lead sulfate PBSO4 is formed and the limiting current decreases linearly with decrease of lead ion. That means with increase of sulfate SO4-2 ion. At equivalent point, current falls to almost minimum or zero and becomes constant. Biamperometric titration. In biamperometric titration, two electrode cell is used instead of three electrode cell. Here, both electrodes are polarized unlike in amperometry where polarization of a single electrode is done. Here, at one electrode oxidation takes place which is balanced by reduction at cathode. Therefore, a reversible redox system must be present either before or after the end point. Here, curve A is an example of titration curve when both the reactant behaves reversibly at the electrode. For example iron 2 with cerium CE4. In this system both iron 2 or iron 3 and cerium 4 or cerium 3 system behaves reversibly at the platinum PT electrode. And the curve B represents a case where an irreversibly behaving system such as arsenic acid titrated against a reactant which behaves reversibly. In this system no current passes till the end point is reached. Beyond the end point, the current rise in proportion to the concentration of iodine solution and the curve C represents a case which is reverse of case B. In this system reversibly behaving system is titrated against irreversible system. Thus, the current after end point remains zero. For example titration between iodine solution and thiosulfate solution. Different types of titration curve in amperometric titration. Titration of active solute and inactive reagent that is lead ion Pb plus 2 versus sulfate ion SO4 minus 2. Here, limiting current is maximum at beginning due to lead ion Pb plus 2. With addition of sulfate ion SO4 minus 2, limiting current decreases linearly and after the end point, current is almost zero due to complete precipitation of lead ion Pb plus 2 by sulfate ion SO4 minus 2 as lead sulfate PbSO4. Titration of inactive solute and active reagent that is sulfate ion SO4-2 versus lead ion Pb plus 2. Here, initially due to presence of electroinactive sulfate ion SO4-2, limiting current is zero, with the addition of the electroactive species lead ion Pb plus 2, the limiting current is about zero till the end point and after the end point it increases linearly due to presence of free lead ion Pb plus 2. Titration of both active solute and active reagent that is lead ion Pb plus 2 versus dichromate ion Cr207 minus 2. Here, high limiting current at initially is due to presence of lead Pb plus 2 ion. As dichromate Cr207 minus 2 ion is added, 
the current decreases linearly and after end point, it again increases linearly, due to presence of electroactive dichromate Cr2O7-2 ions. Titration of solute and reagent giving opposite reaction that is iodide ion I- versus mercuric cation Hg plus 2. Addition of mercuric cation Hg plus 2 decreases the concentration of iodide ion I-, when the end point comes then further addition of mercuric cation Hg plus 2 will lead to reduction of mercuric cation Hg plus 2 and vice versa. Advantages of amperometric titration This titration can usually be carried out rapidly, since the end point is found graphically. A few current measurement and constant applied voltage before and after the end point is sufficient. This titration can be carried out for determination of both organic and inorganic compounds, determination is based on the formation of precipitates and complexes, redox reaction, acid-base reaction, etc. This titration can be carried out under condition where visual or potentiometric methods are not possible. In this titration removal of oxygen O2 is not necessary. This method show high sensitivity and high precision. It is even possible to titrate system with relatively low equilibrium constant value. A number of amperometric titrations can be carried out at dilute concentration at which many visual or potentiometric titrations no longer yield accurate results. Foreign salts may frequently be present without interference and are indeed, usually added as the supporting electrolyte in order to eliminate the migration current. Depolarizing substance which cannot be estimated polarographically can be successfully estimated, etc. Limitations of amperometric titration These titrations are subjected to the ordinary source of error of volumetric determination such as coprecipitation effect. The foreign salts, if present in very greater amount, they may interfere the current change. A correction for dilution is strictly necessary to attain a linear relationship between current and volume of titrant, etc.